It is Wednesday, July 14th, 2021, and I am Pastor Mark Dilley of West Valley Grace Fellowship. I pray the message today will be used to strengthen you in your faith and encourage you in your walk with our Savior and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we spoke about the depravity of man in Ephesians chapter 2. And we're going to begin our Bible reading with that and then go on to the marvelous gospel of the grace of God. And so let's begin by reading Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. Ephesians chapter 2 beginning with verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. If you look in your King James Bible here, hath he quickened is in italics, which indicates that it's not really in the scriptures, but it's been added. And therefore, I would like to read this again without that in the reading. And you who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation or our manner of living in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And I would like to make just a couple of remarks about this passage. Paul's writing to believers, and he's telling them that they were at one time dead in trespasses and sins. They lived that way in the world, and now he comes to verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are ye saved. And so the Ephesian believers, and this applies to the church, the body of Christ throughout history, all of us at one time were living in this world system dead in trespasses and sins. But God, and that's where Paul begins, after declaring this horrific condition and the behavior of all mankind, Paul immediately reveals God's gracious actions towards those who have believed the gospel of salvation. And so it's important to understand that this is being written to people who have believed the gospel, who are saved through faith in Jesus Christ and him alone. And so let's begin this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4. But God, get this clearly set in your mind but God it is God who did this and let's adjust this these two verses a little bit and put it together it actually says but God has quickened us together with Christ when we take out these phrases that are inserted in between this Paul is telling us that it was God who made us alive in Christ. And that's why this gospel of the grace of God is such a glorious message, particularly for the Gentiles who had no claim whatsoever on God. And so here is the vast majority of the world's population at the time of Christ and shortly thereafter, when Paul was converted and given this marvelous gospel of the grace of God to make known, 
the Gentiles were dead in trespasses and sins and had no claim on God whatsoever. And yet God intervened by grace and in love and because of his mercy to save those who would simply trust in the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on their behalf, bear, bearing their sins in his body and paying their price that they might be saved by the grace of God. And so, but God who is rich in mercy, what is mercy? Mercy is not getting what you deserve. And so Paul is here explaining to these Ephesian saints and primarily to the Gentiles that what God did, you didn't deserve to have. It was solely by his grace. And so you didn't get punished for your sins, for your trespasses, for your position in Adam. If you have trusted Christ as your Savior, you have received the mercy of God. But in the present age, in this dispensation of grace, the entire world is living under the mercy of God. He is not judging or imputing their sins against them at the present time. He's opened this amazing arena of pure grace where he will accept anyone who trusts in his son believing that he died for their sins and that is the gospel of salvation and so God is rich in mercy and it is God who is doing the work of salvation no one seeks God. That's what the scriptures make plain. No one is good. Not one. And so it was God who initiates this thinking in a person's mind, who begins working in a person's thoughts to bring them to this conclusion that I am a sinful human being and I am separated from God. But because of his mercy, he didn't judge me. And now, in grace, having provided Jesus Christ as my sacrifice on my behalf, I can be redeemed. I can be made alive with Christ. By grace, I am saved. And so God is rich in mercy. The Lord Jesus Christ says in John 6, 44, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, I believe that that's what Jesus Christ is expressing here, that during his earthly ministry, all of those people who embraced him as Messiah did so because of God's grace and God's initiative in their lives, drawing them to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. Today, in the dispensation of the grace of God for the church, the body of Christ, I believe that every person who puts their faith or who trusts in Jesus Christ as their Savior does so as the result of the drawing power of the Spirit of God, illumining their hearts, enlightening their minds to the truth of the gospel. And that's what's so sad today. There is not a lot of clear representation of the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation deals with two things, the sinfulness of man and the salvation that God has provided for all who will believe. And so, to be saved today requires faith and faith alone. And so, why would God do this? 
That's what the next part of this passage says. For his great love wherewith he loved us. And if we look at the pronouns, the we's and the us's and the you's in this letter are all pointing or associated with believers in Jesus Christ. It's talking about you and me today. If we've trusted Christ as our Savior, God so loved us that he gave his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. And Jesus Christ loved us and gave himself for us that by faith in him we would receive the gift of eternal life. And so that's what Romans 5.8 tells us. But God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, Paul wants you to know with full confidence that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. Romans 8, 38 and 39 Paul says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Again, cannot separate us, referring to those who have trusted Christ, believing he died for their sins. And Titus says, or Paul in writing to Titus, in verse chapter four, 3 and verse 4, But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared toward man, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And so for every believer in Jesus Christ, we've been washed clean from all of our sins and we have been regenerated or we have been given new life in Christ. It was God's love that moved him to provide his son to die in our place. And then verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, now that's what those first passages, first verses 1 through 3 talked about. Even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us together with Christ. So it's so important to understand the gospel for today is, has nothing to do with our behavior. It has nothing to do with what we do. It all has to do with what God has provided and what Jesus Christ has accomplished on our behalf. The only activity that we have in our salvation is faith to believe the gospel. And God is rich in mercy. God is rich in love. And he is superabounding rich in his grace. As mercy is not getting what we deserve, which is judgment, grace is is getting something we don't deserve, which in this case is salvation, eternal life. It is a pure gift. Grace is absolute and will not endure any admixture with works regarding salvation. When we were dead in sins, he made us alive in Christ. When we were separated from God, he united us together with Christ. It is by grace we have been saved. 
Let's just read some quick passages here. Ephesians 2, 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which so many of us know. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In Romans 11, 5 and 6, Paul writes this, and this is why people really don't understand grace. They know something about it, but they don't really embrace it in its pureness. In Romans 11, 5 and 6, it says, Even so then, at the present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. I hope that's understandable to you. You are either saved by grace alone or works alone. And I can guarantee you works or being under the law will save no one. For anyone under the law is under a curse. And so the Apostle Paul says in Romans 4, 4, and 5, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. In other words, if someone employs me, or if I work for someone, they are obligated to repay me, if that is the arrangement. I work for someone, they are indebted to pay me. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. It's the righteousness of God that is put on our accounts by faith in Jesus Christ. So a person is saved by grace through faith, believing the gospel of salvation that was revealed to and through the Apostle Paul. And this is the message for today. I want to make that very clear. There is so much emphasis put on repenting today and turning from your sin and getting baptized. And at one time, that was the gospel. When Peter preached at Pentecost and thereafter, that was the gospel for Israel. He comes right on and says, what must we do to be saved? Or what must we do? And Peter responds, Repent and be baptized, for then you shall receive the remission of sins. But that is not the gospel of the grace of God for today. The gospel of the grace of God for today is so simply put in 1 Corinthians. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. This is 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. That takes care of Ephesians 1, 2, and th or Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1, 2, and 3. Christ died for those sins. And that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Mankind in his depraved and fallen state is blinded to the reality of the gospel of salvation today. They are blinded to the preaching of the cross. And left to himself in his unredeemed condition, he is only 
religiously interested in the imaginary God he has fabricated in his own mind. But to those who are saved, but to those who the Lord Jesus Christ has illumined their hearts and their, enlightened their minds to this gospel of salvation and have believed the gospel, we rejoice in the declaration of our sinfulness, knowing the gospel of the grace of God tells us that it's true the preaching of the cross, which is the power of God unto salvation. And so we rejoice in the cross. That was not the case during the time of Peter's preaching. At that time, that cross was a representation of the rebellion of Israel and the crucifixion and murder of their Messiah. It was not any joy in that cross. There was no joy in the death of Christ. And as horrific as that death was, we rejoice in his love for us that he was willing to die in our place so that we could receive the gift of eternal life. Telling the unsaved today that they are condemned in their sin, that they are alienated and enemies of God is not a popular message and it is not well received. Telling the unsaved that they are utterly unrighteous and have no access and have no access to God in themselves is totally rejected apart from the convicting work of the Spirit of God. And that is how God has made us alive in Christ. He worked in our minds. He shined his light into our hearts that we might believe the gospel of salvation. And therefore, it is all to the praise of his glory and grace. And so how blessed we are today to know that our God is rich in mercy, rich in love, and rich in grace. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, how thankful we are for the gospel of salvation for today, that Jesus Christ bore our sins in his body on that cross. And through faith in him, we have been delivered from our deserving and just condemnation and brought in, adopted into the family of God, adopted by grace through faith alone. And we are looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. Amen.